Hi, today I'm so excited. This is one of my favorite jewelers, David Webb, uh, the quintessential American jeweler. I'm so excited about this amazing monograph done by Ruth Peltason on my one of my favorite jewelers. My name is Sergio Andres with Elegance Found. Let's just jump in and see some of my favorite pieces. One of the most iconic pieces that uh, David Webb is famous for is he started a trend for animal jewelry. You know, we had the Panthers of Cartier and we had um, uh, jewelry that was a part of brooches and maybe pendants. But David Webb brought that into all other pieces of jewelry. This is one of his most quintessential pieces. It is the zebra uh, bracelet. He had started designing animal bracelets in 1957, but in about 19, in the, in the early 1960s, they just took off. Uh, the zebra bracelet was first designed in 1963. And I love it because it plays to um, David Webb's sense of fashion and fun. You do have platinum set diamonds here. You do have ruby cabochons, but then you have this amazing enamel work. And each one of these was done each, all of the enamel work is hand painted. So the uniqueness of zebra stripes were a perfect motive. And you see here also bringing uh, fashion to fine jewelry. Here you see the screws, you might know those from uh, Cartier Love bracelets, but these are essentially mechanisms to attach each one of these segments. You see this exquisite cl uh, clasp bringing fun to modern jewelry, you know, and he was playful. He actually sometimes got inspiration even from children's books. Um, this one's The Big Book of Wild Animals by Felix Sutton in 1954. Uh, so exciting, uh, very collectible, uh, dozens of animal motif bracelets in the David Webb archive. And I just wanted to start with that because that's one of the things that I find so fun about his work. The other thing that was amazing about this book was that I learned about objects like this. This is what David Webb called an evening box. And he called them evening boxes because they were purses, but they were using techniques of fine jewelry. So they were made out of gold. They were set with precious stones. Um, they had not much practical value because they were so small. They could hold a makeup, maybe... Um, uh, a pack of cigarettes or a cigarette case, um, but they were absolutely exquisite. And here you see um, fashion icon Nan Kempner uh, with this exact piece right here. Um, and this was in the 1969 uh, Chicago Sun-Times. And it was, you know, you see more of her evening boxes here. She's wearing David Webb uh, earrings and a ring. And... Um, they were just absolutely exquisite. They ranged in price from seven thousand to twenty-five thousand, which was huge amount. Were huge amounts of money in uh, nineteen sixty-nine when they were really popular. When this photo was taken, uh, so I thought that um, that Ruth did a really great job, including the story of evening boxes in this book. You know, they were fun. You can dance with it in your hand. They were these luxuries. And they helped catapult David Webb into precious objects. And that's the other thing that I think is the real star of this book. And these objects really started from a collaboration of one of the great tastemakers of history, uh, Jacqueline Kennedy, Jackie O. And she was a client of David Webb's. And after her husband um, became president, she decided that she wanted to collaborate with David Webb, an American jewelry designer, to create precious objects that could be used as gifts of state. And she, which, and her idea was to highlight the minerals that are found in the United States. So this was the era of American exceptionalism, and Jackie O, as this incredible tastemaker, had this vision for creating precious objects as gifts of state to highlight uh, materials like Arizona malachite, Utah citrine, Virginia hematite, uh, Montana green copper. And he designed these. Some of the first ones look like this, which are just these amazing stones. This is malachite with gold rope. And this was given to uh, President and Miss Betancourt uh, of Venezuela. This one here 
also beautiful. This one's considered called a sea anemone paperweight. And this was one uh, that used azurite crystal, which is found in a couple places in the United States. And this was given to uh, the Grand Duchess Charlotte of Luxembourg. Uh, included in this book are is the full story of these gifts of states. They were such a success story that um, he continued making them during uh, Nixon's presidency and um, for different charity events like Mildred Hilson's um, uh, uh, Hospital for Special Surgery um, that uh, he was a part of. Um, this is the definitive monograph of David Webb. It is filled with amazing stories, amazing photos, just curated. Almost every page tells the story of David Webb's designs, how he was so much on top of fashion and how he really created this idea of fine jewelry as being fashionable. I love David Webb. I think that any lover of David Webb needs to have this book, uh, anyone that loves jewelry design. But David Webb is really important in jewelry history. And as such, I think that he'd be a great uh, addition to your library for um, anybody that's a history of a jewelry fan like me. Uh, hope you. My name is Sergio Andres with Elegance Found. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.